Because we can't travel from our homes to the lab at the moment, I thought we'd do the next best thing and bring the lab into the home, into Dr. Zand's kitchen, to be precise. So you know what this means, Zand? Zand! What? What does it mean, Chris? What have I told you about eating with your mouth full? Well, I'm sorry, Chris, but you mentioned that we're in the kitchen and I couldn't resist filling up my snack jar. Are those my favourite chocolate chip cookies? I absolutely are, Chris, but you're not getting any of these ones. They're not for you. See, Chris, it says treats for Zand right there on the box. Wouldn't make any sense if you had some. Well, that is very disappointing. Anyway, what being in your kitchen, Zan, does mean is that instead of our usual don't try this at home experiments, we're going to show you some do try this at home experiments instead. Whoa! We've rigged my kitchen with every gadget you can think of. We're going to get up, close and personal. I am literally calling the shots. Look at this. Today's topic is fingerprints, and if you've got fingers, you've got fingerprints. And in fact, you also have similar kinds of prints on your toes. And the great thing about fingerprints is that they are completely unique. No one has the same fingerprints. Even though Chris and I are genetically identical because we're twins, our fingerprints are different. Humans aren't the only animals with fingerprints. All apes have them, and in fact, a recent scientific paper showed that koala fingerprints are almost impossible to tell from human fingerprints. So the tips of our fingers have lots of nerve endings, and the ridges of our fingerprints probably increase the surface area of the fingertip, allowing our fingers to be even more sensitive. So let's take a look at some fingerprints close up. For this, I'll use my super impressive telescopic camera and a macro lens. Are you ready, Chris? Yes. Good. Ow. Not again. What? Oh, I was Stop just it. checking the lens. OK. Now, get out your fingerprints and let's have a good old look. Here we go. This zoomed-in view allows you to clearly see the pattern of curved lines on Chris's finger. There are three basic kinds of fingerprint. There are loops, which Zahn and I both have, and that's about 60% of people have that kind of pattern. There are also whirls, which are less common. About 35% of people have whirls. And there's a third kind of pattern called arches, but only 5% of people have those. Look at this fingerprint. Can you see the loop? And what about the whirl in this one? Take a close look at your own fingerprints and see what type you have. Now, if you don't have a special lens or a magnifying glass to look at your fingerprints, you can use an ink pad, which is like this. It's best to roll your thumb or finger over the ink and onto the paper so you can see all of your fingerprint and you can do as many as you want. Now, this is brilliant. But remember to wash your hands afterwards. You don't want to get inky fingerprints everywhere. Well, I must say. I'm very pleased with that. Zand, I think this has earned a place on your fridge. The space on my fridge is normally reserved for artwork of the highest quality. I suppose I'll have to make an exception. I'd say that's the best one on there. Uh, lovely. Now I'm just going to wash my hands. Zand, while I'm washing my hands, did you know that the ridges on your hands that make up fingerprints actually start to form when you're just 10 to 15 weeks old before you're even born. And at that stage, you're only 10 to 13 centimetres long. Did you know that? Yes, I did know that, Chris. But did you know that the scientific word for fingerprints is dermatoglyphs? And that comes from the ancient Greek derma, meaning skin, and glyphikos, meaning sculpted, like sculpted waves in the skin. Hmm? Yes, I did know that. But did you know there are lots of ancient fingerprints? A tub of Roman makeup was found in London that was almost 2,000 year old and had Roman fingerprints in it. And in fact, Neanderthal fingerprints have been found of in. Of course, the I didn't know any of that, Chris. I'm a doctor, not a caveman. Now, the thing that we do 
all know about fingerprints is that they're used to catch criminals. And in fact, they've been used for that since 1892. Well, I must say, Chris, that was an excellent fact off. And to reward the winner, me, I'm going to have a cookie from my treat jar. What? I thought I was the winner. <sighs> I can only think of three people who might have stolen my cookies. Can you help me solve the crime? Was it A, Mr Grumbles, B, Minisand, or C, President Dalton the Squirrel? All of the three suspects absolutely love cookies, and we're going to find the guilty party in today's Do Try This at Home! Now, we're on the hunt for a hardened criminal, aren't we, Chris? Uh, yes. But you need a fake criminal, so... <clears throat> Grown up, Grown up alert! Or you can use a sibling. Anyone in your household will do. For this, you're going to need a small amount of talcum powder or cocoa powder. Some clear, sticky tape. Some hand cream or body lotion. A moisturiser of any kind will do. White or black or dark coloured paper. Finally, a pair of gloves to make sure that you don't contaminate the, uh, <clears throat> crime scene. Zahn's using latex medical gloves, but in fact, any old gloves will do. Right, Chris, there's a bit of greasy hand lotion. Rub that all over your hands. Your skin does have natural oils, so you can get fingerprints without using moisturiser, but it adds a bit of grease and enhances the oils and makes them a little easier to find. Right, Chris, how are your hands? Uh, greasy. Great. The next thing you're going to want to do is get your fake criminal to start handling things. Shiny surfaces are best. Be sure not to annoy your grown-ups with the things you touch. It's good. Thank you. Now that you've found a fingerprint, the next thing you want to do is put some powder on it. Now, if it's a light-coloured object, cocoa powder works well, and if it's a dark-coloured object, then talcum powder can work really well. So, I'm going to use a bit of cocoa powder because this is a pale surface. I'm just going to gently tap on the cocoa powder straight out of the jar. Best to put your object on something so you don't get powder everywhere. And again, you can brush it off, but in this case, I think it's going to work fine if I shake it around a little bit so it's covered there and then give it a tap. And look at that! The cocoa powder has stuck to every single fingerprint perfectly. Well, that is fantastic. The next part of the process is lifting off the fingerprint. So, I have some pieces of sticky tape prepared here. If I choose my favourite fingerprint, which is that one there, I can put the tape, if you put the tape firmly, stick it just before the start of the fingerprint and then lay it down really firmly across it. Give it a rub very gently. And then when you peel off the tape, look at that. We've lifted the fingerprint off perfectly. The final part of the process is to stick the fingerprint down. Use light coloured paper for cocoa powder or dark coloured paper for talcum powder. I'm going to take a closer look. A perfect fingerprint. If this was the criminal, we'd have him bang to rights. OK, Chris, time to use the same technique on Exhibit A, the empty cookie jar. Grumbles, Minnie's armed, President Dalton, one of you should be quaking in your boots. Right, let's have a look here. I'm going to cover the fingerprints in cocoa powder. And now the moment of truth. We're going to tap off the cocoa and see if there are any fingerprints. Chris, look at this. It's working. There are fingerprints. This is going even better than expected. Look at that. Real clues. We're hot on his trail. What do you think of this, Chris? They look like Mr Grumbles to me. Time for another piece of sticky tape. And I'm going to get this all on film 
for the upcoming trial. Trial? Exactly, Chris. We're going to put this cookie thief away for a long time. I mean, there's only a few cookies, aren't? Tell that to the judge. If you're finding it hard to stick the tape down, you can wipe the area around the fingerprint and that should make it easier. Just like before, I'm carefully putting the sticky tape over a fingerprint and pressing it down and then carefully lifting it up. There we go. A perfect print. Now it's time to pick the culprit's fingerprint and stick it down. And now, Chris, I'm going to take a picture of the print and send it off to the National Database. You know somebody at the National Fingerprint Database. I certainly do, Chris, and we're going to get a very accurate comparison indeed. And we'll find out once and for all which of these three suspects stole my cookies. Chris, the information from my contact at the National Fingerprint Database is back. Grumbles, let's have a look. Hmm. Too many whirls, too hairy. Minnie's armed. Hmm. It's a close match, but it's far too small. Look at these dimensions, Chris. Nope. It's not a match. That only leaves President Dalton calling up President Dalton. Hmm. These don't look like a match at all. They're far too... well, squirrely. Let me put them all side by side. Grumbles, Dalton, Minnie's armed. Suspect. Well, it's very odd, Chris. None of them match at all. I suspect it'll never come to anything. A lot of crimes do go unsolved, Zand. I just get some more biscuits and move on. Hold on a fingerprinting minute. I think I've seen this fingerprint before. This fridge art looks like it matches quite well. Hang on a second. Look, the loop here looks a lot like the loop here. And the spacing of these lines looks very similar, too. Let's get a close comparison. Oh, I know that fingerprint anywhere! Chris, it was you, the biscuit thief! You'll never catch me! I'm the greatest biscuit thief that ever lived! Oh. Mm. Come oh. back! Oh. My biscuits! <laughs> How dare you! Those cookies are mine! Christopher Rudolph Van Hoogenhaus Tullican, get back here! I'm calling 